I will uh, speak about the applications. I will refer to the uh, chemical building block. I will give an overview. I will stick more on the food ingredient part because this is uh, uh, where uh, we are active on in BioZone. So uh, you have seen that in the recent year is more and more pressure that, uh, that uh, it is not only enough to, to produce uh, products which are addressing the, the economy. It has to uh, be produced products which are addressing a bioeconomy. So it means that more and more aspects such as sustainability and, and, uh, and in, in all this uh, fast moving trend economy has to be considered. So on the other hand, we, we, as you have seen into the previous presentation, they make my job uh, uh, easier. We are having a climb in oil price, beside the fact that we are speaking about uh, uh, a limited resource. On the, on the same time, consumers are demanding more and more for the environmental friendly products, while the governments of the, of the different EU countries and actually worldwide are trying to align their, their policies into these directions. So basically, nowadays it's, it's happening and the future, it's, it, the future predictions are the same that we are moving from an oil-based economy into a bio-based one. Into my presentation, I will stick more onto, onto a, a, a bio-based product and onto the food part. So chemical building block, even so I think all of you might know what is. It's always better to see uh, uh, the definition. Uh, this is a molecule which can be converted to various secondary chemicals and intermediates and in turn into a broad range of different downstream uses. We are having two types of uh, chemical building uh, blocks. Dropped in, which are bio-based version of the existing petrochemicals. Those are a bit easier for a company to, to introduce them on the market as they already have an established market. And the second part, it is the novel bio-based chemical as the name it said, they are novel bio-based, and they cannot be uh, obtained throughout the, throughout the traditional chemical reaction. Here, for the, from the company side, it is uh, a higher financial and technological risk for producing because, sure, you speak about uh, uh, novel bio-based. <clears throat> it was a lot discussed into, into, into the previous uh, presentation, also by Bruno, Anna, and, and, and uh, Jessica. Here we are having a graphic on the, on the prediction. What will be the chemical building block market? So in 2013, actually between 2008 and 2013, it was registered a 35% increase. It is quite a lot because it was reaching already 1 billion uh, uh, US dollars, uh, euros. If we are looking to the production to, till 2013, it can be said that it might be that it might be in the in 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 uh, scenario, in the high probability scenario, let's say like that, that it can reach 10.4 billion euro. This is uh, this is quite enormous, but it can also reach only 4.8. Why? Because this scenario is uh, uh, were were made by by Biotech project, which is another project which was financed by the by the European Commission, are depending a lot how the how the research is answering to some key question as well how the price of the, of the, of the uh, uh, raw materials will be, and, and so on. So, uh, in Europe, it is said that these uh, this, uh, uh, five chemical building blocks are at the moment for the, the most interesting one and are considered also to have the highest potential for, for the future application. 3-HPA is an important, I, I will just pass very fast throughout them so you, you, you get some of the, of the overview, is an important C3 building block, derives several commodity and specialty uh, uh, chemicals like 1,3-propandiol, acrylic acid and so on. If we go further to uh, furfural, it's having a direct application as a solvent in the chemistry industry and is also a key intermediate for several important uh, uh, bulk chemicals. PDO is pretty known, is a diol uh, chemical building block, is used in various applications, including cosmetic, personal care, and, and uh, so on. If we stop to uh, 
isoprene, we can see that about 90% from, from the isoprene is converted to synthetic natural rubber. Get an idea about the application. And this material, it is identical with the one which is uh, isolated from the tree who actually produced this uh, 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 rubber. You have seen already uh, into the previous presentation, Transbio has started and into the workshop presented by Thomas into the circular. It started with the characterization and selection of the, of the byproduct, then uh, pretreatment, different ways of, of fermentation. And finally, what I'm referring further, it is on the succinic acid and application test as well as a, a chemical building block. I will not uh, insist too much on the, on the general uh, uh, on the overview of the succinic acid. I just want to mention that Europe was the largest market globally for succinic acid in 2013 in terms of value, and it might continue to, to this trend. And out of this, Germany is, uh, is the key consumer of, uh, of the uh, succinic acid in, in uh, uh, Europe. Succinic acid, as, 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 as the majority of the chemical building blocks, as, as the bio-based chemical building blocks, it is uh, most likely that will register a high increase. If you look to the global productive production of, of capacity of succinic acid in thousands of tons, is this one, so 700,000 tons. We are looking that in, in 2013, okay, here the numbers, if you look into the different publication, can go between uh, 15,000 tons and go to till like 21,000 tons. It was 15,000 tons, which means that to, to uh, a total value of 105.2 uh, million dollars, uh, uh, while the total capacity on that time was 51. If we are, if we are, are gathering the, the, the results from different publications, from different studies, we will see that in 2020, it is expected to reach 261, <coughs> thousand tons bio-based succinic acid out of a total of 593, which will already go to 1.1 billion by, two, by 220. Uh, this high interest on succinic acid as a, as a building block, it is also shown by, by several industrial alliances and partnership between the big producer of, of bio-based. Here you can see uh, the alliance which were made into the, into the last... Uh, years. So why is succinic acid such an important chemical building block? If you are looking at the, it, it, they are from, from succinic acid, it can be rich like 10 different derivatives. Each one of them is having a, a, a different application going from, from the food industry until the agriculture or food and, and uh, uh, so on. But what, which one from this application is having the, the, the highest uh, uh, market share into the prediction which are done now? If you look like 1.4 butandiol, PBS plasticizer, and, and, polyes and, and polyester polyols, it is slightly, it is most likely that will dominate the, the market of succinic acid as a chemical building block. Here with blue, we can see the, the uh, BDO, you can see till 2020, basically compared with uh, 2014, I think it grows like three times already. And we are speaking here about biosuccinic. I speak only about the graphic. It's addressing only the one which is uh, uh, bio. <clears throat> okay. Uh, all these derivatives, as, as I said, why is so important? Because it has different application into into the different uh, uh, industry. So I won't, uh, I, I won't uh, uh, go throughout all of them. It's just an overview. But as you said, look, industrial application, we can have it for, for curing epoxy resins, uh, polyester synthesis, and, and so on, engineering of plastic. And we can go further. We can use succinic as is a chemical building block also when thinking to, to textile application, photography, agriculture, cosmetic. Here in food, I just put as food ingredient because I will refer separately on it. Is also as pharmaceuticals, like uh, <laughs> for example, if you come to, to Bremerhaven, uh, where Biozone it is, and then there is a fish town. 
it's uh, very, very tasty. The fish, you take uh, uh, the fish to bring it to Spain to show how good fish we are having there, and then your luggage is lost. You can use succinic <laughs> acid as, as the odor one for removing the fish flavor. That's another application, which is very interesting for some people from here. <laughs> so, uh, I will go further into the, into the uh, food ingredient, but not before, maybe stating because from all this application one could say okay but which one of them it's it's uh, having the highest market share if we are looking uh, the industrial application it is the one which actually have the the is dominating the the chemical building block on the other hand we have also the uh, the pharmaceutical which is very strong and and the food ingredient coming from from behind with about 13% as shown into the previous uh, 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 graphic video, it, it, it is still expecting to grow, to have the fastest uh, 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 growing in terms of uh, application and sure markets uh, share. I will go further on, on the uh, food ingredient. I, I stated here several applications. If you are starting to look on succinic acid application in food, you will find a lot of application and anybody it's, it's, it's stating that it was having good <coughs> results on, 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 uh, uh, on, the, on the different application. You can see here even as salt uh, replacing, reducing, some of them are saying that it's also a flavor in nature. We were performing some in-house tests to see if it's really a flavor in nature. With our results, we did not get that succinic acid in, in our food matrices was capable to, to uh, increase the flavor, but on the other hand, we got a salty aftertaste. So we go from pH regulator, chelating agent, and uh, emulsifier. When speaking about application of uh, uh, succinic acid into food, it is very important first to look to the regulation which, which are stating the, the, the necessity and how you can apply this, uh, this uh, ingredient into food. So there are two, actually three regulations which, are, which, are have to, which has to be considered. It is the Commission Regulation 872 from 2012. The other one is basically amending them. But this is stating that uh, succinic acid shall have a purity of at least 95% in order to be able to use it in food. And here it says also what can contain an extra uh, beside the, the succinic uh, acid. There is another regulation which is very important. Even so, succinic acid is E363 uh, uh, and can be applied in food. You cannot apply it in any food. So here it is a list of, of food categories where you can actually apply the succinic acid and it states as the maximum level. So we can apply it into dairy pro products and, and analogs, 6,000 uh, uh, milligram per liter. Then we can uh, apply it in, in spice, in soup, salads, protein products. Again, 5,000 uh, maximum level. You will show, you, I, I will show you into the next slides what means that because for us was also we did not work with succinic acid up to, up to, to, to the Transbio project. And we wanted to see what means if I put like uh, uh, 5,000 milligram per liter. Then it can be applied also in beverage. So if you see here, uh, they are numbered into the regulation from one and basically from one. Uh, uh, here there are 11 food categories where you cannot apply it. Then you go to, to the salt. And then you go further, another two categories where you cannot apply, and then you can apply it in beverage, non-alcoholic beverage, flavored drinks, and dessert. So we, as I said, we, were, uh, we have started to perform some, some uh, in-house tests. Still, results are, are under analyzing, but I can show you some of the, of the uh, uh, preliminary. We were using uh, uh, three different... Uh, Two, two different concentration of succinic acid and what we said that to 0.7% of succinic acid it was uh, uh, slightly sour but acceptable but what is very important here in many of the, of the papers said that succinic acid is, is enhancing the flavor okay in our, in our context if you incorporate it into, into 
such matrix as a yogurt is basically rather masking the product favor than providing an enhanced functionality. How important is this for the, for the uh, uh, food industry, depending from which side are you looking? Do you want to uh, enhance or do you want to maybe mask a flavor? So it's, it's plus, pluses or minuses that depend of the, of the uh, product developer how it wants to, to use it. Uh, then we have started because in BioZone we are very, very directed into, into uh, uh, jellifying agents. We are producing uh, uh, food. One of our main lines of products is, is for elderly which cannot masticate and swallow. So basically we have to transform their food into a puree, but then you have to reshape it to look good so they can swallow it and, 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 and eat it. So we come with some uh, jellification agents and then we try to see what is happening if we are incorporating succinic acid, what is our advantage of using it? Is it any influence? Is it increasing the, the jellification or not? So we have used it in an in a, in a, uh, apple juice. We had three uh, st uh, thickening set steps. This is how you normally do it. Okay. Syrup, honey, and, and pudding. I still have another slide, and I'm done. <laughs> so, so we arrived, no influence on the uh, viscosity, was slightly sour, and what is very important, it gives a salty aftertaste. And I would like to mention that we are speaking of a time in which we have in Europe an overconsumption of salt among all the population level. So it might be as, a, as, a, as an alternative maybe to reduce a bit the, 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 the salt while still having a saltiness perception. Uh, again, we have reached that the sweetness and fruit flavor, it, it, the, the person which were trying were not feeling it as strong as, uh, as it was without the succinic acid. Uh, it's, Sorry, the, 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 the pictures are not in a very good uh, quality. Here we were incorporating in some other gels. We were trying gelamgram and, and, uh, and uh, agar agar. And uh, one of the, of the uh, conclusion which we arrived is just when, when you add the succinic acid, the gel strength and the water holding capacity decrease with the succinic acid content. So basically, uh, the water is not kept, it, it flows. It was supposed, maybe you can see it here, I don't know. So, again, the acidity and saltiness was, was uh, reduced the, the sweet and the fruit taste, and uh, the addition of 0.04%, of, uh, uh, it's uh, quite low, but you feel it very, very strong into the food, actually, so you need to have very low quantities of seed, as it resulted, again, into a slightly sour, but still palatable gel. So here, with such concentration, will be, will be uh, still uh, okay. I did not draw some other conclusion. As I said, are, are, are some of our preliminary. I hope you got an idea about what means the application of the chemical building loss and, and what could be the application of succinic acid into the uh, food ingredients. And thank you very much. <laughs>